Hi guys, it's me again, Piladri. Welcome to my channel. Okay, so um, I'm back. <laughs> to my subscribers, I would just like to apologize for not um, uploading any content for the past few weeks. I was um, having my personal time. I needed I needed personal time for myself. Um, so many things happened. I don't know. I just didn't feel like doing some reaction videos and they don't I didn't want to record a reaction if I'm not really feeling it because it would you know it would reflect it would like be like a fake one and I don't want to I don't want to give you content just for the sake of just uploading videos you know um, if I'm not feeling it I will not do a reaction I want to like you know give you genuine content but I'm actually kind of taking a risk <laughs> and in doing this because you know I was um, thinking of aside from K-pop because don't get me wrong um don't get it twisted <laughs> I still love K-pop I will always love K-pop and of course I will continue with the uh, Netflix shows and everything but you know for the past few days I was really thinking of you know any other content that would really be productive because I, I love telling stories um, my friends would know this one. I'm, I'm actually, I really love, you know, conveying or telling stories of some, you know, something that I know or whatever. And it's not gossip. <laughs> but um, I just decided to, you know, tell you a story about myself. My life, actually. So um, I'm trying this series and I'm calling this Life Stories with Phil Andrew. If you're into it, then welcome to Life Stories with Phil Andrew. <laughs> Alright, I know this is a risk and you know, I just decided to do it. If nobody will watch it, then it's fine with me for as long as I can, you know, get it out of my being, get it out of my system because I really, really want, wanted to share to you my story because yes I have so many very very interesting life stories to share and the reason that I'm doing this is to like you know I know there are some of you I know there are some some of you who can relate to my story and you know I'm just doing this one because I first of all I couldn't sleep and I was tired of like looking for shows to watch I, I gone through some reality shows i just watched keeping up with the kardashians and i'm indecisive when it comes to sometimes i become indecisive when it comes to watching what what shows to watch and so i just decided to you know record and you know just um imagining that i'm talking to somebody and yeah i'm talking to you now to start with this series i would just like to share to you my background um, first of all, my name is Phil. My name is actually not Phil Andrew. My I only have one name, actually Phil. <laughs> and uh, the reason why I added Andrew to my name because first of all, I like the sound of it. And I really wanted to have two names because, you know, um, just a trivia. <laughs> Fun fact, here in the Philippines, um, it's actually like um, parents love to add one more name so if you if you have some Filipino friends out there, you would you would notice that our complete name usually mostly has like our names has like two names like Phil Andrew, um, Jose Marie, Maria Janet, Ivy Jane. I'm, I'm giving out names of my friends. Um, Alexis Christel, Jemima Milka, Milby Grace, stuff like that. <laughs> And yeah, my name is Phil and from what I've known, from what my my father told us or my mother told me about my name, um my, my father's favorite artist is one of one of his favorite artists is Phil Driscoll. And he's actually a Christian thump, trumpet player. And the fun the funny the funny thing is when I during college I used to play the trumpet and I was in a jazz band here in um in our place in Silliman University and yeah it's just, you know, funny how things work. Anyway, so my name is Phil and it's not really Andrew, Phil Andrew, but I'm planning to add that legally soon. 
if I can afford it. I'm the youngest of five. I actually came from a broken family. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna name names for now. I'm not gonna because I actually didn't ask permission from my family. <laughs> I just, this is just like a prompto decision to like really share my family story. But yeah, I'm just not, I'm not gonna name my, you know, family member's name. I have an older sister, a, a brother, a sister, a sister and me. So two boys and three girls. Yeah, so when I was um, six or seven years old, no, actually when I was five or six years old, I think five. Yeah, five or six. Our father left us. Uh, I was five. Basically, we're just kids. Yeah. And my mother just, you know, started teaching. Um, she just graduated um, bachelor's degree in education. And she just started teaching in a private uh, private school here in the Philippines. Actually, I, yeah, by the way, I'm from the Philippines, if you don't know. I'm from the Philippines. I'm currently living in Dumagate City, Negros Oriental. Yeah, as I was saying, when I was five, my father left us. Yeah, before that, um, he actually had a business in Cagayan de Oro. And I, I'm not really sure what the business is all about. Based on the letters, um, I actually kept their letters, uh, my mother's and father's letter back and forth. Um, I don't know if I still have it now, but I'm still gonna look for it. But yeah, I'm not, I didn't, I don't really understand what the business was about. But yeah, basically my father started a business there and then he used to like go back and forth, um, go home in Cebu and then go back to Cagayan to manage the business. But then from what I've known, um, his partner like basically scammed him. His partner just basically stopped and my father couldn't handle the business in his own because he had some loans and stuff and so he had to like stop the business and the money stopped and the finances stopped and before that we pretty much we're not we're not rich but you know we we're kind of like in a like we did okay we did okay when my father was still having that, that business and my mother just started teaching. When my father stopped um, communicating to my mother, just all of a sudden, just like that, he's gone. And my mother kept on sending him letters, um, telling him to come home. Um, I can still remember the lines. Um, if, if you don't love me anymore, just for the sake of our children please come back I couldn't do this on my own and stuff like that so I really have a, a I, I have a heart for all single parents out there because it's not easy um, so my mother didn't have a choice but to raise up but raise us raise the five of us on her own my mother had to like sell some of our stuff in the in the house and then we had to transfer to like a smaller house because our house back then was like a rented one and so yeah because my father was just basically MIA and so and my mother just started you know teaching in a private school but and so if you're in a private school here and you just started teaching um, your your income is not that big you know my mother attempted to like really raise us the five of us on her own together the five of us, the six of us together, but um, she really couldn't do it. So um, she decided to ask um, help from my grandparents, my father's parents, and also my father's siblings, my aunts and uncles in, in Dumaguete, here in Dumaguete. I was seven years old, my first grade. I can still remember I lived with my cousins. The, the five of us lived with my cousins and my grandparents, and it was okay. But it was really, really hard. I wouldn't go deep with, you know, my um, story about that with my cousins and my grandparents. If, you, if you're if you interested, you know, I'm gonna tell my story about that in my next upload. But yeah, so basically my mother asked help from my grandparents and then we, so we lived in our grandparents' house. I was seven. And so I started uh, my first grade here in Dumaguete 
and my mother uh, continued working in Cebu as a, as a public school teacher. She wanted to like gather her strength, gather her um, finances to just really, her plan was to like, if she can afford to have like one or two of us with her, that's the plan. So in the meantime, since she couldn't afford it that time, she asked help and so we lived in our grandparents' house. I didn't really understand the gravity of the situation back then because I was in my first grade. So during my time in my grandparents' house, um, I can still remember after school, um, we were asked to like, you know, help out with the house chores and stuff, clean the windows, clean the house, gather some water from um, some in a specific place. And, you know, just basically being seven years old and, you know, um, in a normal childhood, I guess, after school, you know, I can imagine, you know, playing with my neighbors, well, playing with the other kids. But what happened was after school, we, uh, I can remember cleaning the house, helping with the chores, and you know, just I thought that was the normal childhood. That was the normal thing. And so it was okay at first. I enjoyed doing it with my siblings, with my cousins. But um, as time went on, I, re I realized, especially when I, when I witnessed some of my neighbor, some of the neighbor's kids playing after school and you know, I realized, wow, why are they playing? I'm, I'm, I'm working, <laughs> I'm cleaning the house, I'm wiping the windows and stuff. And I felt that, you know, um, I became like jealous or with the other kids um, enjoying their childhood while me, I was like, you know, doing chore stuff. And so one day when my, when our mother visited us in Dumaguete, I begged her, I begged her and told her, Ma, um, I wanted to go with you in Cebu. I want, I want to live with you in Cebu because I don't like it here. And so, yeah, she agreed because of course I'm the youngest. <laughs> it ended up with me and my two other sisters living with my mom in Cebu. And so the five of us basically just, you know, went our separate ways. So my eldest sister and my, my eldest brother uh, stayed here in Dumaguete and me and my two other sisters stayed with my mother in Cebu. And so growing up, um, all my influences are like girls, ladies, my mom and my two sisters. And I really didn't have that strong relationship with my brother because, you know, we're supposed to like bond and because we're the only guys in the family left. <laughs> and so I long for that bond with my brother. But, you know, back then, during the 90s, of course, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have, I didn't, we didn't have that, you know, emails and stuff. Unlike today, it's so easy to communicate today. But back then, we only communicate with letters and, you know, long distance calls here and there. And so my, my influence, my childhood was basically with my sister and with my mom. And of course, I have um, my neighbors my friends but um oh my god is this a coming out story <laughs> i don't know so yeah i'm just going with the flow here you guys i actually don't know the point of this story but you know i just wanted to share you must but anyway so growing up having those influences in my life with my sisters and my mom you know as the, the world standards um a boy is supposed to be like manly and do some boy stuff and play some boy stuff and you know although i i i, I did have those kinds of you know friends and i played those boy stuff boy games boy toys, <laughs> boy toys. but um growing up all i can remember is like my sister has a crush with this guy and my sister has a crush and in high school and they, they talk about it and you know they 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 include me in those conversations and then all the all those conversations stayed in my mind and you know it became like pleasant to me and it became attractive to me when they talk about guys and boy crushes and stuff. And so shortcut to my sixth grade. 
that became my, you know, um, identity crisis. So you may say, growing up without a father and a brother around you, it's really, really difficult. <laughs> and it's really, really hard. And I know some of you can relate because my influence around me are like girls, my sisters and my mom. And so the confusion started, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and, and the funny thing is, I had the same birthday with my father. And so every birthday that I had was just a sad day, a sad moment. Although they, I could, I can't really remember, even, to, even up to now, I can't remember a single birthday where I'm completely happy uh, during my childhood because every birthday reminds me of my father and um, growing up, it, it became clear to me that he's not coming back. And so every celebration of mine during my birthday, um, yeah, um, my mother would greet me happy birthday and stuff like that. And um, she would, you know, she would do her best to like have like celebrate and just like little food here and there because, you know, she really couldn't afford to have like a really, really big party because I, growing up, I, I really, I didn't really experience that birthday party that a kid should have. And I'm not blaming my mom, of course, she did. She really did her best. But, you know, I had that kind of heaviness and sadness that whenever my birthday comes, I immediately remember my father and immediately be sad and cry and long for him to come back and, you know, celebrate with him. And I actually have, I actually have a tattoo here. <laughs> And it says uh, 07235488 because my birthday is July 23 and 54 is 1954, my father's year, and mine is 88, my, my year. So that's the reason why I have this tattoo. And anyway, my childhood was not really that great, although there are some great moments, there are happy moments. But I was really, really exposed in uh, at an early stage, I was exposed to pain and brokenness and you know betrayal I witnessed that at a young age and I can still um, I can still vividly remember one incident before my father completely left us they had an argument in the kitchen and my father was you know smoking his cigarette and my mom was crying and screaming and you know she had this hammer and just trying to destroy their picture frame of their wedding their wedding picture remember that uh really really strong picture frame where you know it's like a wood or whatever wooden glass and no matter how many times my mother tried to destroy that frame it wouldn't it was hard to destroy and that that was just and i was in the staircase crying and just telling them to stop stop arguing and stuff like that and yeah, that was my last memory of my father before he left us. And so whenever my birthday comes, that's the, the scene that I can remember. And that's why I cry and ask why. Oh, that reminds me.